We are so excited because we are with two people who are at the top of their craft in the fields that they work in. We have Susie Mosier, who you can see, is it every Tuesday at Birdland? Every, yeah. At Birdland. And we have Mark Shaman, who has written Hairspray, as well as all of the fabulous ditties that you hear on the Tony Awards. They're actually one of my favorite things. Um, they have just come together along with several other artists to create a, and please let me get this right, LGBTQA. Did I get all the alphabet letters right? I've lost track. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lullaby album. And I'm very curious about this because honestly, I never knew that lullabies were one-sided. <laughs> I mean, it always was baby and baby this. Well, you know, um, I bet many lullabies say mommy and daddy want to, you know, put you to bed. Oh, do they? And, you know, I, you don't know, know. I, I don't know. I haven't sung an actual lullaby in quite some time. Let's think about it. Rock goodbye, <laughs> baby. No, that's just about child endangerment. Uh, <laughs> well, I you got me. No, no. Hey, speaking it, of speaking of got me, uh, just because I, I wouldn't want to go uncorrected, I'm sorry. There are many great songs that have been written for the Tony Awards that I had nothing to do with. So I wouldn't want to put that out there and and take credit for some of the great, great songs that I okay, just I'm simply want. As a matter of fact, I'm I've gonna... lost I've lost not one, but I think two Emmy Awards, two songs written for the Tony Awards. So damn it. I really like the songs that you write for the Tony Awards. Every time it's the song I, I gravitate to the most, it's the one you wrote. That's why of it is Susanna. He's no. a genius. Well, I've only written one opening for the Tony Awards, in fact, and there's been many great, great songs that I had nothing to do with. So I just didn't want to take credit for something I, I shouldn't. Well, okay, here's my first question to you then. Besides the Lullaby album, what, is, what else are you working on right now? Retirement. <laughs> you don't have a musical in your head that you oh, want? Yeah, um, my uh, co-lyricist Scott Whitman and I have been working for the last seven decades on a new musical of Some Like It Hot. Oh, which oh will be on, on Broadway next season if if things work out as they now are supposed to. It's fantastic. I was, I was privy to a read through of it and it's hilarious, the music. I want to say is to date some of the best music they've written and it's it's bright it's funny and it's also been very much updated which is it needed to be because clearly there was a lot of issues that needed to be addressed and they I think they did a beautiful job of it so I'm very excited to uh, watch that progress so I'm like hot well didn't they also make one like years ago called sugar Yes, that's why, I, yeah, I say we've written a new musical of it because, yeah, Sugar exists. It was written in the 70s what? and written by great titans of, of Broadway, Jules Stein and Bob Merrill and, and, and Michael Stewart book writing. It never quite like stuck to the wall as much as other shows. It doesn't get, you know, revived or produced all the time. And even in my community theater days, it was not one of the shows that was always getting um, performed. And so when the producers came to us and said, you know, we think it's time to take another crack at it. And since Scott and I had been um, so terribly beat up for daring to write a musical of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and of daring to write a sequel to Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins Returns, we thought, you know, we haven't gotten terribly beat up for taking on an iconic project in, in, in weeks. So how about Some Like It Hot? Yeah, that's good. They're going to really hate us for this one. Not only is it an iconic movie, but it's already been a musical written by the gods of, of Broadway. Oh, we are going to get torn to pieces. So of course we had to say yes. <laughs> well, You're I not going to get allotted because it's really, really good. Really great, in fact. I remember hearing about this and being very excited because I think that I saw Sugar um, and I remember thinking they haven't captured the movie really. 
So I, I'm looking forward to this immensely, actually. Um, Susie, what are you working on now? Um, well, uh, to get back to the topic at hand, I'm working on a, 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 two, a two-year-old. I, my, um, my wife and I uh, had a baby, which, you know, hello, I, can you even imagine at our age having an infant? Well, you know, that's what I'm doing. So I'm raising a baby right now. So that's a big project for me. And I've got a few things in the pipeline, a couple of things coming up, but you know, I'm, I love doing my show and, 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 and I love raising my child. So I'm, I'm happy as a clam right now. Your child is beautiful. I've seen pictures. Thank of you. Him. Thank you, Suzanne. I appreciate it. Really? Yeah. He really is a beautiful boy. Yes. I mean, you know, really sometimes good. you have to, sometimes you have to really grit your teeth when you see some, some, you know, babies and stuff, you're like, Oh yeah, he's so cute. Yeah. But Hudson is truly like a heartbreaker already. He's just gorgeous. He is. He is. And, and the irony, of course, is I had nothing to do with that. Uh, and, you know, I was I was pretty, um, I never wanted to have children. That was not part of it. But my wife was saying, oh, we're going to have kids. But, you know, we just celebrated our 27th anniversary. So I thought that's not happening. I'm, I've dodged that bullet. But, you know, three years ago, she's like, we're doing it. And I was like, OK, thinking it won't work. But it did. And she got pregnant. And But now it was like such a gift, such a I mean, who knew that this is exactly what I needed, you know? So I, I, I'm, I'm uh, thrilled to be raising a baby. Now my only sadness is how freaking old I am and how I'm not going to be able to see him, like, you know, go to prom or whatever the hell. Yes, you will. <laughs> will I? Yes. All right. Okay. Um, Susie, what, was your lullaby written for your child? Well, you know, I, it was, it was, I used ideas of it because I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say the way that this Mark and I started to write on this is that he was asked by um, the guy who was putting together this guy right. Right. and um, to, to, to participate. And he had this, he was thinking, what would, uh, but he remembered that he had a beautiful melody that he had written like years and years ago um, with uh, Bette Midler. She had just had a baby. And so he was writing this, sort of a lullaby for her and Aww. he just was never able to put together the, the the correct lyrics and so it sat on a shelf and then when he was asked to do this project he um he thought oh well I love that melody I never used it and then he we're we're good friends and he thought well Susie just had a child maybe she could help you know fill in some of the blanks because as you know Mark does not have children so that's how our collaboration she, also, she, she wouldn't she wouldn't shut up about being a mother and her and her kid and her baby I was like Susie let's make it rhyme and then you can <laughs> say it all so so she you know I had started writing the lyrics I mean I wrote lyrics like when when was Beaches 1988 that was when I first just had this melody in my head and Bet had a two-year-old Sophie and so I, I wrote um, how can I describe my Sophie, Sophie, have you tried describing a dream? Then I never could finish the rest of it, and it just sat, and then, and then many decades went by. And so when this came up, I started, I went back to the lyrics and, and tried to start anew. And meanwhile, every day I was seeing Susie's Facebook posts about being a mother and her joy about it and love. And so... And Susie is a brilliant songwriter. If you go see her show, she creates songs on the spot. She's like famous for this. I mean, she, she writes most fantastic songs off the top of her head. So I knew she could write song and I knew she sang great, even though she's a wild comedian. I also knew she had a beautiful voice because I'd also seen her one woman show where she sang a, a lot of different materials. So it just all like, it was like a light bulb moment of like, why don't I get an actual parent, an actual gay parent who's going to be raising a child who will have to be, you know, who will be asking the questions of why was our family different than my friends at school? So we thought, let's write the lyrics that kind of explain that. And so we just traded phrases back and forth. And voila, we had a song that she also sang gorgeously. And I think that really speaks to your question, Susanna, about a, a gay lullaby. It's not so much for, it's because, you know, 
most most kids see mommy and daddy and 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 as they're growing up we wanted something that normalized everyone every every you know type of family is a family you know it's your family it's your own sweet family and you know it's like and and i i think that's what we captured that's what we tried to to give the child a feeling of like everybody has their family and they're different you know oh is that what the song is about uh-huh yeah. oh that's unique <laughs> No, 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 no. I don't mean that in the sense that. Well, did you say unique? Yes. Because. Well, then there, there you go. That, that's, yeah. that, that, uh, that explains why this album is such a lovely idea. Because yes. it would be nice if, if a song with the lyrics of our song wasn't unique. And it would be nice in a few years when there'll be others to follow. And this album also has around 70 songs on it, I think. So I'm sure it's covering the, covering the whole uh, aspect very well. Um, That's pretty unique. I mean, that when I think of lullabies, I think of them for when they're this big, you know? I don't think of lullabies for older kids. And I don't think about lullabies as being songs to help enlighten and to help um, bring you to another place. Yes, yeah, the song, our song, and I'm sure the others, is more like a bedtime story. And it's really kind of for the age of a kid who wants to hear a story as, as they're falling asleep. So that they can, and to be truthful, I think the song is, is just as much for the parents to be able to sing. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. Will this go further and be turned into like how Dr. Seuss used to have his things go and be movie musicals, like TV musicals? It will it go that far, or is it, it just an album? As far as we know, the truth is Ryan, who asked me to do it, I, I didn't know him at all. He, I think, he wrote me through Facebook or Instagram, and just said, "Hello, this is my name, and I have this idea." Oh my God, this phone never rings. And it's ringing. <laughs> no. I, want, I want you to see. It's so exciting. It's <laughs> here. I'm just gonna go like this and then hang up because it's always just uh, you know, it's just watching my phone. Yeah. yeah um, certain numbers. Where I was I? I was pontificating. What was I saying? About um, TV musicals. Oh yeah. So I didn't know Ryan at all. So. I don't know what his plans are for it outside of just what it is now, which is this, this lovely concept and all these new songs. I can't wait to hear them all. Um, there, there was a tape that I played my child when he was growing up called Baby Songs. And they all had like little movies to them. And he watched that thing till it died. So I, I think that would be lovely for this actually. Yeah, I mean, I, with what you're saying, it will be fascinating to hear the other songs and how they may be skewed to a younger. But I think because of the theme of it, they are going to skew a little older, like what our song is like, because what it's about just requires it to be just like maybe a year older than just yeah. rock about me, you know? Yeah. Has the album come out yet? I don't think I don't so. Know. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's supposed to come out like around the 28th of October. I'm not sure on that though. Sorry about that. I will, no, I will look this up and I'll put it, when I write the article about it that goes with the video, I will let people know so that they can get it. Um, I always like for my audience to know the people that I'm interviewing. And so I ask everybody this question. It's my favorite question. Susie, if you had to use a song or cycle of songs to describe who you are, what would they be? Um, let me entertain you. <laughs> uh, um, That's, uh, hard. That's a hard yeah, question. Time after oh, you're getting it next. Time after time, Cindy Lauper's song, Time mm -hmm. After Time. Um, and, uh, that's, that's a toughie, <laughs> uh, 
but it really lets you know who people are because I, they say that eyes are the windows of the soul, but I think songs are. <laughs> um, Mark, what do you say to that question? Yeah, now I want to give me the exact wording of the question again. <laughs> if you had to choose a song or a cycle of songs to describe who you are, what would they be? Yeah, well, I think maybe sadly, <laughs> the songs that speak to the part of me that is not is like lost in the stars. I don't know if you know that song. Mm -hmm, I do. But you know, it's it's this this song of are we all just has God forgotten us? Is the planet just mm -hmm. falling in the universe? Are we lost in the stars? <laughs> so <laughs> there you I go. Love, I, I also love. thought of Old Man River. <laughs> that sort of also defines the way I feel about things. Um, but um, also, you know, oh, I don't know. There's just so many fantastic songs. I mean, I've been so lucky that from the time I was eight, yay high, I've just learned so many songs. There are just so many brilliant songs that I, I couldn't even begin. Well, I just started, but you know. <laughs> I'd like to come up with some more upbeat songs for you. I, I will. <laughs> I happen to like New York. Oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a good one. Um, anything by Rogers and Hart. Uh, Why well, do you do you prefer Rogers and Hart to Rogers and Hammerstein? Is it? It might be because when I was in junior high school, uh, a friend, a, a girl who I was friendly with, had a Rogers and Hart songbook on her piano, and I think I borrowed it and never gave it back. Mm -hmm. so, so I had this book right when I was really starting to like just explore like when, and with Bette Midler albums were making me think of songs that were not just the songs that were on pop radio or Barbara Streisand albums. Am I gay? You know, just song, it was exposing me to also. And so I had this Rogers and Hart songbook that was also really kind of very wonderfully styled the way uh, the what it looked like and and. and those songs just stuck with me and, and still to this day, I mean, there's nothing better than like, I wish I were in love again. The lyrics to I wish I love, were in love again are just the greatest. And um, I just I just love them. And it's so amazing also how Richard Rogers had a, two separate careers that were mind blowing. Yeah. Either one of them is beyond belief that uh, one man could write that many fantastic songs. And, and and then the other thing is that the, it sounds so different. The music he wrote with Lorenz Hart's lyrics, you might not even recognize it at all. And you know, and I can really get into the musicology of it, what the kind of chords he uses, and and the little thumbnail notes, which are like what you play with your thumb in the right hand. That like uh, anyway, the chords, the melodies, they're just like from a, a different person. Something happened to him when he started working with Oscar Hammerstein, and it's just. You know, I could teach a course. Maybe that's what I should do. Is no oh, it's fascinating. I've never heard anyone really discuss that because it is oh. really now. Now, was it was he first with Hart? I don't know. Yes. Was it? And what happened between them? Oh, well, it's the most fascinating story. That one day, I mean, my fantasy would has always been to do like an HBO series that tells the real story yeah. of all the great songwriters because the stories, Lorenz Hart was. I think five feet tall. He was basically an unattractive, very short guy, a closeted homosexual, a terrible alcoholic because of having to hide himself and the way he physically was. So he would disappear and he'd get beat up by what we would call rough trade. And, and, he, he, and they would have to find him and search for him, which is why finally their partnership dissolved before Lorenz Hart died. And then he died sadly, like on the street. It is the most sad story of this most brilliantly talented man who just fell in the cracks of, of what you're allowed to have been at that time. Wow, we went off on quite a tangent. Well, I, I'm sorry, I'm a play based on this. Say that again? There's actually a play based on this uh, that was at Lincoln Center with Tony Shalhoub and Santino Fontana. Really? I'm trying to think of the name of it. Yeah, it was great. Um, act one, maybe. Oh, act one. That's Moss Hart. That that's a whole other story. But, but, but Lorenz is in there. 
Yeah, he might just be a character that comes and goes in it, but Lord knows someone. Sh- I mean, I always saw Dan, uh, Danny DeVito or Bob Hoskins when he was alive. Th- those, those, they could have played this, you know, but I don't know if the families would ever l- let the real, real. I mean, all everything I'm saying is common knowledge now, but um, would love to. And then to hear all those songs. Oh my God. Yeah, that's actually a great idea, Mark. A musical. Now, Mark, is there a dream project that you'd like to work on that you haven't had a chance to work on? I think I mentioned it earlier in the conversation, retirement. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> oh, believe it. No, I've done enough. I have done enough. I've had a fantastic run. I, I'm very proud of the things I've gotten to do. And, and it's amazing. I mean, I've been doing this since 1976. And I, 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 I not at all like what I just said, but I, I've had like different parts of my career. Like there are people who don't even know that like I score movies and I've been nominated for seven Academy Awards, but some people just think Hairspray and Smash and that. And, you know, I've just been able to do so much and I am at the point where I don't want to be judged by producers giving notes who maybe I don't feel have everything in their, have the the goods to be telling me stuff, not to mention social media, my God. So I, I've been saying that the next person I want to judge me and tell me how I'm doing is St. Peter. No. Oh. I ho- I hear that, Mark, man. I hear that. What was your favorite score from the movies that you wrote? I guess there are two. Uh, the American President is one that people, it's, well, despite the ego egotist that may seem to be present here, I, I'm pretty bad at taking a compliment. I'll always say, yeah, but, you know, this happened, and then I wish it could have been. Well, but no, the American President... That that score I can take a compliment on, and it was one I was nominated for that I actually really thought they might say my name. They didn't. And then uh, recently, Mary Poppins Returns, the same exact experience where I really felt like I really, you know, there was the songwriting, and then there was the scoring, which is a whole other different thing. And I really f- was proud of that score, and it's another one where I really th- thought they might actually say my name. Nope. But I, I wrote you, I wrote, we were, I was watching that with Hudson and I was just overcome by the score. The score is so gorgeous. All the incidental music was just yeah. fantastic. It's a beautiful yeah, I got to record, you know, with like 90 piece orchestra for three weeks in England, three weeks over the space of a year. It was an absolute fantasy, yeah. Susie, is, what would you like to accomplish that you haven't accomplished? Well, you know, I would, I would still love to originate I mean, the fantasy, it's a total fantasy because I don't see the scenario where that would happen. But um, uh, I'm sorry, someone just texted me. Uh, But I would love to originate a role on Broadway. I was lucky enough to be on Broadway in Hairspray. That's how Mark and I met. Um, But I, I was... I was doing a role that had already, I came in on the last two years of the show of the glorious six years, six and a half years. Was it six and a half years, Mark, on Broadway? I think, I think so. Yeah, so I got the the last tag of it, which was, it was the best experience. I, it's better than I imagined. I loved being on Broadway and I loved being in Hairspray. If you're gonna do one Broadway show, you want it to be Hairspray because it's the most joyful and just the way it's set up and, 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 and just the, the diversity in the cast. You know, you just had this full experience. I, lo- I still am very good friends with, you know, I would say at least 50% of the people that I was in that show with. So yeah, so I would still love somehow to originate a role, but you know, but you know, you never know. This question is for both of you. It's the last one. What haven't I asked you that you would like people to know about you? Susie. I'll I'll, I'll go first, Susie. I mean, it's, it's, it's it's the thing that of, uh, (laughs) It's part of this project. The fact that I write lyrics always seems to um, get forgotten or just people don't comprehend it. They they only want to think that one person writes the music and one writes the lyrics. And and I understand that because that is the norm. But um, 
I co-write the lyrics and I love writing lyrics. And Susie can tell you, I'm, I'm very anal about the craft of lyric writing and, and getting the rhymes just right and the right syllables on the right melodies. And, and I just love that. And so every time it, people leave me off of it and literally take the words out of my mouth, I'm going to have it put on my tombstone. Yes. He yeah. also wrote lyrics. But uh, <laughs> so there I am. Bitter so, what, so what do you want people to call you? You want people to call you songwriter as opposed to, because I know composer leaves makes people think yeah. you just wrote music. Yeah, composer, lyricist, I don't know. Yeah. Well, you're going to be very proud of me because even though I know you have partners, I do think of you as a duo. I, I, your lyrics are very fun. Uh, Thank you. I always thought of you as both. I never thought of you as just one, honestly. <laughs> oh, I have been, I, I actually have a memory of once uh, after the show at Hairspray, someone who'd been in the show for years introducing me uh, and Scott to family and said, oh, this is Mark and Scott. Mark writes the music and Scott writes the lyrics. And, and she had been in the show for years. <laughs> and and I guess it's just easy to, and it just, you know, you're, you're backstage and, but anyway, but even like journalists and, and articles and stuff, I'm just, meanwhile, let me shut up because I'm the luckiest guy on the face of the earth. Susie? You know what? The thing about Mark too, is he really loves puzzles and he really loves piecing something together and that's what i learned from him working on this it's like for him it's like it needs to all fit together in a way you know he doesn't like sort of like a, a half rhyme or something like that like he mentioned um before not not here but another time about you know pop lyrics and stuff like that and now musical theater is going in that direction where the rhyme doesn't have to match but you know what i think it's like who's that guy that you love that was a one of the mad magazine contributors mark oh yeah um Oh God, I can't believe I'm old and now I, uh, the name right. is escaping me only due to I'm um, having a senior moment. There's, well, there's been so many of them, Al or Mort. He wrote, he wrote all the sort of, he was yeah. one who would make, write the fake lyrics to all the big shows, you know, like that. But oh, they were, okay. you know, sung to the tune of was, you know, yeah. it always said sung to the tune of, and that was my school. That was my schooling, Mad Magazine. Yeah. I can't I believe I can think of the name right now. Sing them. Huh? Sing those. I remember them. Yeah. And Love. they were perfect. That's why I, I really think that informed you, man. I really do. When I write reviews of shows, if I love the lyrics, I normally incorporate the lyrics into my review. That's nice. Well, I like them. I mean, like I just saw six and I, I actually haven't liked their lyrics. I think their lyrics are very funny. I think they're hard to hear, but I think they're very yeah. funny. Um, and I knew the lyrics to three of the songs before I saw the show, thank God, because otherwise I don't think I would have gotten it. Um, but I, I love the, uh, the craft of lyric. I think that if you're going to do a musical, lyrics should play a big part of that. Yeah, and, and the lyrics that are out there now that don't have perfect rhymes, they are also great and they they exist, but I, I it is bittersweet for me to watch little by little that the mountain, the, uh, that stable mountain of, of the craft of theater lyric and, and, and putting, you know, you know, the rhyme, the rhymes are perfect and you don't, you don't, it, it doesn't sound like the wrong way to pronounce a word because you're putting it on an odd syllable. I just see it crumbling right now. I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, look, I'm watching. Along with civilization, I'm I'm seeing it <laughs> crumble. We all have a front row seat. <laughs> I but I agree. I and I think it goes even more into the craft of writing a play that it used to be you needed an arc in a play. That doesn't matter anymore now. It seems like whatever you want to throw up there. And I'm, I have to admit, I'm not that person. I want to see a play that is well-crafted, a musical that is well-crafted. I, 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 I would agree with you on this immensely. It, it's actually breaking my heart to watch this happen. Because I think oh. what, what's showing up is that. 